Can you give us the encapsulated version of what No Man's Sky is? The short version is, it's quite difficult. Who doesn't love a David and Goliath story? We see it all the time with indie games that go up against AAA publishers and end up being smash hits. But what happens when the indie game is both David and Goliath? That's basically the story of No Man's Sky. And today, we're going to talk about its rise, its fall, and how it has risen again. But first, as always, make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on more videos like this one. Developed by Hello Games, No Man's Sky is perhaps the most ambitious project an indie dev team has ever attempted, especially a six-person indie dev team that had only ever put out side-scrolling platformers. But lack of experience wasn't going to stop these guys from creating the biggest, most public train wreck the industry had seen in years. This universe that we've created, it's, it's so vast, it's so boundless, it's actually infinite, and we don't even know what's out there. While we had heard murmurs about an open-world sandbox space exploration survival game for a few years, E3 2014 was No Man's Sky's first big push to get public attention. And it definitely succeeded, because the game looked incredible. From the trailer alone, people were hyped. As the months went on and No Man's Sky started to pop up in gaming media spotlight more often, the hype bubble was blowing up fast. A lot of that publicity was thanks to Hello Games co-founder Sean Murray. His name was inseparable from No Man's Sky. Though he was one of the several founders of Hello Games, Sean was definitely the face of the company, and he wasn't shy about sharing details with any news publication that would hear him out. Having worked at Electronic Arts, Sean was tired of making sequels and by-the-book titles, so he broke out of the AAA industry to create something new. That ended up being No Man's Sky. Inspired by the optimistic science fiction of the 1960s and 70s, the open-world survival game would allow players to traverse a bright and colorful galaxy teeming with life. This was already a refreshing take on a survival genre which tended to be pretty dark and post-apocalyptic, with one or two obvious exceptions. So with every new bit of information Sean Murray gave out, fans got more and more excited, and Sean gave out a lot of information. Through countless interviews, dev diaries, and social media posts, we learned that No Man's Sky would have multiplayer capabilities with an equally rich and fulfilling single-player experience. It could be made up of endlessly procedurally generated planets with their own planetary physics systems across an unending galaxy full to the brim with resources to mine, data to collect, and adventures to be had. Customizable ships could take you off-planet and into space combat in a matter of seconds and upgradable tools would help to define how your character interacts with the game. You could choose to get involved with the local ecology, influence alien factions, passively observe the flora and fauna, or just become a rampaging destructive force. Essentially, No Man's Sky was shaping up to be a free-form space adventure with literally millions of hours of content. Sean Murray wasn't just promising the world, he was promising the entire universe. And with the way Sean talked about it, you could tell that this was something he was really proud of. There'll be a universe and you can go everywhere and you can have a ship and you can shoot lasers and you know, all that kind of thing. It's like the most childish idea for a game in the world. And the fact that this was an indie game instead of something out of, let's say, EA, added a level of charm and interest. The developers were accessible to fans in a way that AAA devs never are, and it made them feel like real human beings instead of a faceless corporation. So it's easy to see why people got swept up in the excitement. It was one of the most anticipated titles of 2014 and 2015, and when the release date rolled around on August 9th, 2016, all that press coverage and anticipation equated to huge sales. You know, I thought Morgan Freeman was God. <laughs> you are... You're actually my second god that I'm having on the show. It's estimated that No Man's Sky made around $43 million in the month of August 2016. It was the most downloaded game on the PlayStation Store and topped the charts with about 212,000 concurrent players on Steam. That's a release that a AAA studio would be happy with, and this was an indie title. A team of less than 20 people managed to create a game that went head-to-head -head with Batman the Telltale series and a freaking World of Warcraft expansion, and somehow come out on top. It was truly a gaming phenomenon. So, all was well, right? David crushed the bigger and more powerful Goliath through sheer hype and passion. Except, it turned out that the AAA industry wasn't Hello Games' Goliath. The real enemy they had to face was a monster of their own making. 
Despite the sales, No Man's Sky was the biggest disappointment players had ever experienced. In their attempt to whip up hype around the title, Hello Games and Sean Murray ended up severely mischaracterizing what No Man's Sky actually was. Sean Murray's constant media presence got the attention of hundreds of thousands of interested eyes, but his headline-worthy tall tales also served to create an image the real game had to fight against and could never live up to. But this all sounds pretty dramatic. As sad as it is, a few lies or overemphasized features are to be expected when you're running a media campaign for a game. But the list of missing content from No Man's Sky could fill an entire video. In fact, when the game came out, it did fill entire videos. Multiple YouTubers made videos dedicated to calling out Sean Murray's falsehoods. Remember the features we highlighted earlier? Multiplayer capabilities, extremely customizable ships, the ability to influence alien factions, and all that? None of that was in the game. Sure, the planets were procedurally generated, but they were mostly desolate rocks you could strip of useless resources in a couple of mind-numbing minutes. Your ship could take you off-planet and into space, but you wouldn't find anything fun to do out there. It was a far cry from the living galaxy Sean Murray had described. When it came down to it, No Man's Sky was painfully boring and lacked any kind of content to keep players invested. Alien factions ended up being one or two NPCs sitting or standing in various unpopulated buildings. And since you don't know their language, you wouldn't have much luck influencing anything. Oh, and it was buggy. Just like that, the game that had boasted over 200,000 concurrent players on launch day was down to just 2100 by the end of the following month. That kind of drop-off was completely unprecedented. The biggest game of the year was a boring mess, and the angry, confused player base needed somewhere to direct their caustic comments. Negative reviews were pouring in. Refunds were being demanded, but the real hate was directed at the Hello Games team. And Sean Murray, being the face of No Man's Sky, was getting the worst of it all. So Sean and the studio went dark on social media. Months passed. It seemed like No Man's Sky had no choice but to fade into obscurity, chased away by players who were literally out for blood, but it turned out that they were far from finished. In November of 2016, No Man's Sky released its first of many updates. Welcome to No Man's Sky, version 1.1. Version 1.1 came as a surprise to the player base. It added a ton of general fixes and the biggest feature, base building. The response was tentatively positive, and while Sean Murray and the team were still mostly silent on their socials, they kept working behind the scenes. Two more huge updates were released in the following years that saw more and more positive reviews. Eventually, Sean Murray made an official statement where he thanked the players who stuck around and promised to be more open with the game's post-launch development in the future. And he delivered. Updates kept coming in and the dev team was once again talking directly to their players. Promised features started to trickle in, and the undelivered promise of customizable ships evolved into an entire catalog of unique designs and customization options. The total lack of a rich single-player experience became a real story, and the promised ability to play with friends, which was non-existent at launch, became a massive part of everyday play. Slowly but surely, Hello Games started to gain back the trust they had lost, and the newest version, called No Man's Sky Frontiers, is closer to the original version than most of us ever thought we'd get. It might even be better. And all of this was done for free. To call the story of No Man's Sky a redemption arc feels uncharitable. This was a full revival, a rise from the ashes that even industry giants have tried and failed to accomplish. And yet, here is this little indie studio doing the impossible. If you reveled in the downfall of Hello Games and No Man's Sky back in 2016, I can't say I blame you unless you were sending death threats, obviously. It's hard to say why Sean Murray did what he did. He described himself at the time as naive, and I think that's a fitting word. It was obvious by the way he talked about himself and the game that he loved what he did, but he just wasn't the right person to be talking to cameras. But these recent developments are a testament to what can be done when your end goal isn't profit, but player satisfaction. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next time.